Okay, so today we're going to focus on uh, microphone filters in Streamlabs OBS. This tutorial will work for both OBS and Streamlabs OBS. So this is going to be more of a beginner slash intermediate tutorial. Um, if you're already kind of an expert on this stuff, then this video probably isn't for you. I'm just going to go over all of the microphone filters that are available. And I'm going to kind of show what's viable and what you should be using to set up for your stream. And so hopefully this video helps you get a little bit better uh, audio on your streams or your recordings with Streamlabs OBS or even OBS. So let's go ahead and get into it. First thing, let's make sure that your uh, microphone is turned on. So for mic slash auxiliary device one, set it to the microphone that you record with. Of course, mine's the microphone Audio-Technica AT2020 USB Plus. And then just set the speaker to whatever you normally use. Uh, we're not going to worry about any other settings up here. I assume you already have that set up. If not, then you can go look at my previous video on how to set up a live stream using Streamlabs OBS. And I kind of explain it in depth there. So to get to the microphone filters, simply go to your mic slash aux input. Click on the gear icon. And then go to filters. And as you can see here, I already have a noise gate on. What a noise gate does is it allows you to cut off all background noise while you're not talking. Um, so when you select the close threshold above the noise volume and an open threshold slightly below your voice input, that's when you get the best results. If that made no sense to you, basically uh, this one's always going to be more in the negatives than your open threshold. Close threshold, this basically means um, after it reaches this decibel, this is when it's going to shut off your microphone. And then when you go to your open threshold, it's going to open up your microphone after this amount of decibels. What a noise gate does essentially is, of course, it cuts off your background noise when you're not talking. And then if you go farther up in decibels, closer to zero. Um, so if you go farther up in the positives instead of negatives. So let's say if we was doing something. this where we do negative 20 and negative 25 this one's going to attack that threshold a little bit more because um, it's showing that if it's close to this amount of decibel it's going to close the threshold and if it's uh, close to this decibel it's going to open it and of course more in the negative decibels means that you're going to have a weaker noise gate so this setting is best just kind of practiced by you there is no best setting for a noise gate. You just got to find what works for you. Um, so what I'm going to do is show you what happens if you have too high of a noise gate versus too low of a noise gate. So if you go too high up, it's actually going to start clipping your voice out and you're not going to start hearing yourself. For example, if I use it, as you can, it starts clipping my voice. Essentially, if you couldn't hear me there, it's clipping my voice out. As you can see here, I'm going to turn on the uh, noise gate. So test. And then as you can see, there it is. Uh, when I click on the noise gate, it's cutting out my voice. So I found what works best for me is negative 40 and negative 45. And I can test that just by clicking on my keyboard. As you can see here, while I'm talking, you can hear the keyboard, but when I stop talking, you can't hear the keyboard hardly at all. You might hear it here and there when I get super loud. Um, if you actually have this, like, say if you copy my settings and you had negative 45 and negative 40, and you was clicking on your keyboard while not talking and it was still picking up your keyboard, you need to go lower with this. So I'd suggest going in about five decibel increments and keep these within about five decibels from each other. So I have negative 35 here and negative 40. Um, so go pretty much as far to the right as you can without it clipping out your voice like you heard earlier. And then as you can see here, uh, you can still hear it while I'm talking. But you can't when I'm not hardly at all. And if you have too weak of a noise gate, something like this, then you're going to be able to hear it a lot easier. As you can see there, it still picks up super loud. And of course, I didn't have the noise gate on. Oops. <laughs> so basically, just set this to 
what works best for you set it as low as you can without it clipping out your voice and clipping out you know um, like if you're a little bit farther away from the mic so I found that negative 45 and negative 40 works best for me and I ignore these three settings here this is a little bit more advanced and the defaults work pretty good anyways and that's pretty much the simplistic on noise gate next thing we're gonna look at is gain this basically enjoy pretty much adjust how loud your microphone is so if you have a super low microphone you can turn the gain up or if it's too loud you can turn it down um, that's pretty self-explanatory if we go to uh, filter types and we do a noise suppression this kind of works like a noise gate but this works while you're talking and this does have a little bit of effect on your voice quality as you can see here when I turn it on on negative 30 suppression you can see there it does degrade my voice a little bit uh, but it's going to take out a little bit more background noise. So simply put it, a noise suppression filter can be used to remove um, kind of quieter background noise, such as like PC fans or a window AC. Um, this isn't really effective of removing out like stuff like a loud room where people screaming or like a party. Um, basically zero means that this noise suppression is off. And the farther we go this way, as you can see here, it starts suppressing out my voice a little bit more. And you can tell it actually does have an effect on my voice. If you go too far out with this noise suppression filter, it actually will start clipping out your voice super hard. So try to not go too low. I'll try to keep it around negative uh, 20 if you are going to run one or lower than that. Um, if it is a little bit worse, you can turn it a little bit more up, but this is pretty much to eliminate stuff like PC fan noise, um, like window ACs, say if you're streaming your PS4 Pro or PS4 Base, I know they get pretty loud. Um, so you can use this to kind of cut that out while you're talking, and then noise gate is while you're not talking, essentially. And normally I don't run a noise gate, or a, a noise suppression, my bad, because it does degrade my voice out. And usually when I'm talking, they can't hear my PC or anything because most of my equipment's pretty quiet. Um, but if you do have something loud, then that can benefit you quite a bit. And the last thing that we're going to look at is a compressor. This is probably the most complex thing. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off for now and kind of explain it. So a compressor is very useful if your microphone is tuned for a normal volume like how mine is right now i'm not peaking um in the yellows i'm not too low down like on the actual bar here is what i'm looking at this here so it's tuned for a normal volume i would say it sounds pretty good um it's probably not the best is like a more expensive microphone but it's not too low and it's not too loud so this is where a compressor comes in very very good for me basically what a compressor does is sometimes uh, you can spike your microphone to a much louder level. Um, say if you're like shouting or if you're getting into like a heated argument with somebody and you're getting a little bit louder, then your microphone might actually start peeking out a little bit more towards the yellow or even the red. And people that's listening is going to hear that and it's going to be super loud in their ears and they're not going to want to watch you, obviously. Because who wants to hear somebody yell into their microphone and destroy their headphones, right? So a compressor would basically... Um, automatically turn down the input volume which is your microphone so that it doesn't peak and uh, basically when your microphone peaks this causes distortion and other art audio artifacting and then um, essentially you don't want that in your microphone shouting at people and having your chat just hear a bunch of like buzzing in their headset you know so this is where a compressor comes in pretty good so a compressor you turn it on as you can see here, you probably can't tell much of a difference now. But if I start saying something really loud, it's going to start turning it down to where I'm not peaking. As you can see there, I was shouting pretty loud and it's not peaking there. So if we look at the options we have here, the ratio, the X being what we can tune to 1. Um, the amount of compression uh, that you apply is done in ratios. It's like a 2 to 1 ratio. So something kind of like this. Is going to be a pretty weak compression um, this pretty much translates to an audio level of like six decibels or above the threshold and then um, three decibels above the compression if that makes no sense basically what I'm saying is the higher your ratio the much stronger your compression is going to be so the way that you need to tune this is to how loud that your microphone is normally 
versus how loud you're going to be shouting. Because if you have too weak of a compression here, it's not really going to help you out. You're still going to be peaking. If you have too high of a compression, it's going to start actually cutting out your actual voice. So usually I try to keep this around a 2 to 6 ratio, depending on, you know, your needs. So me personally, I would probably keep it on something like a 2, because I don't really shout too loud and my microphone doesn't really peak a lot without a compressor and um, if you do shout a little bit louder say your microphone's a little bit louder than mine then you might want to put this ratio up a little bit higher i'll show you if we put this ratio up too high it starts actually clipping out my voice and making it sound super low and then if we set it down it doesn't really do much at all so i keep it around a two to one ratio um threshold is basically once the input reaches this volume this is when the compressor is going to kick in so you can fine tune this to see when your compressor needs to kick in in decibels um, normally the default works pretty good in my stance but you can kind of turn this up if you need to and it'll start filtering it out a lot less than if you turn it down then it'll filter it out more as you can see there my voice gets super low um, so I'd probably keep this personally to me around like a negative six to ten um, Just depending on your needs you can kind of fine-tune that just the way you want um, Attack release time. I wouldn't really mess with the attack time is how quickly in milliseconds You want the compressor to kick in when it detects a high volume and the release is how quickly in milliseconds that you want the compressor volume to return to normal once that basically the loudness stops um Normally, I would keep this how it is in milliseconds. It doesn't really make a difference. If you're fine-tuning this, then you probably already know about a compressor. And you probably don't need this video, of course, but I wouldn't really mess with those. Um, output gain kind of acts like a gain filter itself. Um, so when you want to compress the signal, it usually ends up quieter. So you might have to apply a little bit of a gain to kind of compensate and bring up the overall volume of your source. So say if you turn this compressor on and your microphone gets super low, you might want to turn this up just a little bit more to like a 2 or a 1 to kind of give you that decibel raise back up. Um, that way it doesn't quieten you out. So what a compressor does, if we turn it off, you can see here it's pretty normal. Um, if we turn it on, if you're shouting a little bit louder than normal, if you talk a little bit louder than normal, it might be making your actual voice a little bit lower. As you can see there, it kind of is doing that to mine. As I'm talking, it's a little bit lower with the compressor on. So if we do a little bit of a decibel boost, which is basically a gain filter built into the compressor, you can see there, then it works out a lot better for us there, and it kind of evens out that audio. So this is basically OBS filters in a nutshell. Um, I tried to explain everything I could. Uh, I tried to be pretty concise with everything. Of course, if you do have any questions, um, just let me know in the comments below. And if you want to test this out for yourself, like if you don't know, a good thing is to watch this meter down here. And if you actually have uh, Streamlabs OBS or just regular OBS, I would suggest starting a, a recording and just mess around with these settings. Um, start a display capture like I'm doing and then listen to it after you're done. And that's how you can test your volume out a little bit more to kind of see how it does. Um, so... In my opinion, the most important ones to me is a noise gate and a compressor. Um, and of course, a noise suppression filter if you actually need that, which I don't really suggest using one if you don't. As we heard earlier, it actually does hurt your voice a little bit. That's pretty much it with audio filters. I'm not going to keep you guys any longer. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know below. And also, guys, be sure to check me out on Twitch. I'm going to have that linked in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.